gentlemen, gentlemen, and ladies, ladies and gents, it is a great morning. It's a beautiful morning. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, just wanted to bring some information to your attention, if you don't mind, because I don't mind, so then you don't mind, okay? Um, the information I need to bring to your attention, hold on, I'm opening up a document and it has some personal sensitive information, so y'all have to hold on for a second. Okay, we were able to get that stuff out of the way. I want to show you guys something, something that you should have known because I've done too many videos on it for you not to have known. But you're going to find out now because uh, a lot of people, you, you hear that everything is prepaid and some people understand it. But a lot of people, if they tried to prove it, they wouldn't be able to. First, you need to know that it's the Federal Reserve Act. Just understand Federal Reserve Act, Title IV of the Federal Reserve Act. Section 18, paragraph 6. So it's Section 401, which is Title 4, Section 18, or Subsection 18 of 401 of the Federal Reserve Act, paragraph number 6. It's been this way since the very beginning. It has not changed. The only thing that's changed in this act, this portion of the act, is it's no longer circulating notes, it's Federal Reserve notes. That's the only thing that has changed, people. And it says, upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States of any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, or trade acceptances, any Federal Reserve Bank making such a deposit in the manner prescribed by the Act, don't worry about Secretary of Treasury, shall be entitled to receive from the Comptroller of the Currency Federal Reserve notes. Now it's Federal Reserve notes. Now hold on now. The reason why you're entitled to receive that is because the government said, hey, homie, come here for a second. Let me talk to you. Hey, I got a new deal for you. Yeah, it's it's new. Yeah, what we're we, we, we going to do is we're going to give authority to the Treasury. We're going to give them supreme authority. There's no such thing as supreme authority in the United States, you know, because it's three branches of government. But we're going to give you supreme authority under all three branches to go and seize, impound all of the gold in the hands of individuals, corporations, and companies. Wait a minute. Don't that violate the, the Fourth Amendment that says everybody should be protected in their property and their possessions? But doesn't that say that nobody's property can be taken for public use? Because if you're doing this as supreme authority, you're doing it for public use because you can't do it for private use. So don't say you got to compensate me. Oh, snap. You right. Hold on, homie. Look what? We've made provisions. What you mean you made provisions? It says you provided. Provisions and provided the same thing. So we made provisions for you to take care of them necessities because that's what you were using the gold for was to pay for your necessities. That was your money because the Constitution says that nobody shall coin anything but gold and silver as money in the United States. So we made provisions for you. And guess what we did? We said that any of your note and your drafts and your bills of exchange, your bankers' acceptances, when you give it to the Federal Reserve Bank, hey, they will issue Federal Reserve notes because we made Joe Junk securities. You show? Oh, man, we so show. Look what we done did. We said right here, so just so that you know, under the Federal Reserve Act, these obligations that are deposited, as security and gold for the reserve notes, you place them in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent. That's it. Once you place it in the hands of the Federal Reserve agent, section 414 of Title 12 takes place. Well, what's section 414 of Title 12 say? Well, it says upon approval. So anytime you go apply for a loan and you get approved, you've been approved. That means that the bank gets the promissory notes. I mean, excuse me, not promissory notes, but Federal Reserve notes, and you ain't got to worry about nothing. I don't? No, they get, they, get, they get paid. That's how you prove they get paid. But what if they come at me saying I owe them money? Well, you go back to the Federal Reserve Act, and you say, look, under that new law, where the government said they obligated because they made the provisions. That's their obligation now because they accepted the responsibility and the surety, that's why they made provisions, that uh, any monies issued to the banks is as a result of my notes, my drafts, my bills of exchange, and both are at par with each other because they're worth 100 cents on a dollar. 
So once they approve it, it's worth 100 cents a dollar. Why do they do that? Because I gave up my gold. See, the gold given up by the people in the present system should be given to the government. And in exchange of giving it up to the government, the additional money issued shall be without interest upon the people. That's what the government said. So can you explain that to me a little bit better? Ladies and gentlemen, so that you get it, so that you understand it, the government said they made provisions for you. If you've ever been in the military, you receive your provisions. Your provisions are necessities. Those are the necessaries. What do you mean the necessaries? Well, in the army or military, when you receive your provisions, that's your daily rations. So the government has provided rations for all Americans. When you give your promissory note to the Federal Reserve, they are supposed to take it and they are supposed to issue Federal Reserve notes. Not to you, you don't need the Federal Reserve notes. You just want access to the property that you're purchasing. And so that's why if you're buying a house, they give what's known as a provisional credit to the homeowner. That's why you go through escrow. That's why no money changes hands. You don't receive anything in your hands. It goes straight into that other person's bank account. And then the Federal Reserve receives their money from the Federal Reserve agent. The local bank receives their money from the Federal Reserve. All you have to do is go to the title. Hold on. Let's take y'all to the title while I work on this chat GPT junk that hasn't been working for a day and a half now. On this particular website you see I got all these windows open eventually I'm gonna have to close a lot of them because I don't need all of them let's keep going because we know we got it open I opened it yesterday not yet and still not yet not yet still not yet not yet oh god not yet there it is right there let's go here for a second y'all don't mind because I don't mind if y'all don't mind ladies and gentlemen this is the codification. They call it a codification. It's a piece of junk, but we're going to use it for demonstration purposes. This is the authority of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. It says the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System shall have the right. They got rights, ladies and gentlemen. Acting through the Federal Reserve agent, the local bank, to grant in whole or in part or to reject entirely the application of any Federal Reserve Bank for Federal Reserve notes. That means you. However, but to the extent that such application is granted or approved, you've been approved, the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System shall, through the local Federal Reserve agent, supply Federal Reserve notes to the banks. You so apply. But remember, if you go and you take a look at the statement of accounting when you get a chance go look at the standardized statement of accounting if there is a standard statement of accounting I'm looking for it now hold on keep on moving don't stop till the hands of time okay anyway we'll be there in just a second okay we're on our way T R U T H N L E N D I N G Truth in Lending Statement S T A T E M E N T dot P D F. You want to take a look at a standard Truth in Lending Act statement. It is, uh oh. <laughs> it didn't take me there. It took me someplace else. It's taking me to ChatGPT. I didn't ask it for ChatGPT. Let me do that Truth in Lending Act statement again. I'll be right back. Hold on, y'all. I apologize. That never should have happened. I, I don't know what's going on with this stupid computer, but it just didn't want to let me show y'all about the Truth in Lending Act statement. Now, look, there are some of you out there that are trying to help people and you're, you're doing an all right job. You're not doing the best job, but you're doing an all right job. Now, see, we can go to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and get theirs, or we can go to the Federal Trade Commission and use theirs, 
or we can go to the Federal Reserve Board, but this is not their statement. But it says a written statement informing them of the terms and the costs. Okay, we're looking for the statement. We're not looking just for, see? Federal Truth and Lending Act statement. This is Long Star National Bank. So let's go to Lone Star and let's see what their Truth and Lending Act statement actually says. We could have gone to any of the other Truth and Lending Act statements because they're going to say the same thing. It's a standardized form. Standardized, standardized. So because it's a standardized form, that means they're all going to pretty much say the same thing. TikTok. TikTok, 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 TikTok. Ladies and gentlemen, so that you understand, so that you're not misled, the bank loans you credit. The cost of the credit as a yearly rate. The dollar amount the credit will cost you, the amount of credit provided to you, you only receive credit. You don't receive dollar bills, but the bank receives dollar bills in exchange for the credit they give you, so they are compensated. Hold on. You you guys are not paying attention? I was paying attention. I was following the whole thing. Congress said we made provisions. The Federal Reserve Bank has the authority and power and the right to approve your loan and to give Federal Reserve notes to the bank on your behalf. Well, the bank gives you a temporary credit, which they use through escrow to give to the homeowner or the dealership owner or the school for which you're getting the loan from. And the law says there has to be give and take. Well, they gave, okay, they gave you a provisional credit. And then they take from you the monies given to you by the Federal Reserve Board because remember, it's given in your behalf. That's not true. Well, let's go back here and see. I got to go back to that uh, part of the, the, the code right here. So y'all can understand. Because sometimes I can tell y'all don't understand. Y'all just got some, oh, that's, that's the wrong code. That's not the code I was looking for, Chief. So let's see if I can find it. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's see if I can find that code. Follow the yellow brick code. Nope, I went too far backwards. Now I got to go forward. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Sorry about this, y'all. I could just type it in right here, but then, what's the sense of doing that? And the Truth and Lending Act statement was there anyway. All right, we're going to type it in here. Come on, give me mouse words. Oh, it's still going to the page. All right, we're going to let that page take care of itself while we sit up here. Now, it's it's about time it took care of itself, but it's too late. I'm already looking for it someplace else. I didn't see it, y'all. So hold on. We're going to go 414. And now we got to go. Come on now. It's just so many resources being used. Title 12, USC 414. And we're off to the races, y'all. So it'll be one second. And then we go Cornell University. Just so you guys can see, this is only for y'all. And we're going to try to expand this by moving this out of the way so I can make the page bigger. Okay, now we can move you back. We done accomplished our goal. Ladies and gentlemen, the page was supposed to have gotten bigger. It didn't get much bigger. But it says, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors shall, through, through its local Federal Reserve agent, supply the Federal Reserve notes to the bank, which is you, so applying. Now it wants to do it. See how stupid it is? And such bank shall be charged with the amount of notes issued to it and shall pay such rate of interest as may be established by the Board of Governors. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the only reason why you have to pay, pay attention, is because, remember, the loan was approved. 
you have to give the promissory note. Now, they don't talk about the promissory note here. So let me show you why. Do you, do you want to see? Well, I was going to show it to you. We're going to go to Title 41, uh, well, Title 12, Section 412, so you can see it for yourself. This is how the system works, okay? This is what y'all are supposed to know. Any Federal Reserve Bank, negative determiner, meaning this applies to any bank. When you do the research on what a reserve bank is, it's a bank. And the definition for bank is anyone engaged in banking business. When you are making an application to the local Federal Reserve agent for such an amount of Federal Reserve notes, pay attention, you are now engaged in banking business, which means you qualify as a bank. Remember, thus applying for Federal Reserve notes? We just read that. So that's you. And it says, upon such application, this is a different application. This is not the application they send to the Federal Reserve. That's Don't, don't get confused. The original application is you saying, hey, I, I want to make a contract with y'all for Federal Reserve notes. It says that application must be accompanied by a tender. Now, hold on now. This is not payment yet. Hold on. It only becomes payment when there is acceptance of the tender. Approved by the Federal Reserve. So now it's payment. And how do we know it's payment? Because the tender shall be to the local Federal Reserve agent of collateral in the amount equal to the sum. So the tender is in the form of collateral. Well, what's the collateral? Oh, well, the collateral is security. And it is your notes, drafts, bills of exchange. Why? Because Congress made provisions. Oh, see? Provisions. Congress made provisions. They provided that upon receipt of this, they're to receive Federal Reserve notes. Remember, Federal Reserve notes have no, pay attention, value without you providing them a note, draft, bill of exchange, banker of acceptances. Without the notes, drafts, bill of exchange, banker's acceptances, hold on. We got to show it to you because you won't understand it otherwise. Under the new law, the money is issued to the banks in return for notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances. The money is worth 100 cents on the dollar because it is backed by the credit of the nation. So their so-called Federal Reserve notes have no value unless it is backed by the notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances. What? Didn't y'all hear what Congress said? Under the Federal Reserve Act, the obligations that are deposited as security, which are any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and so forth, and gold for the reserve notes are placed into the hands of the Federal Reserve agent. This is the process, ladies and gentlemen. It really is that simple. All you need to do is to get them to prove that they didn't receive the Federal Reserve notes as required in the Section 414. That's it. They don't have a claim. They cannot come in claiming you owe a debt if they can't prove that they never received the notes because once you tender to the local Federal Reserve agent and hold on, and they accept your application and your promissory note, that's it. Because it's no longer your obligation. It becomes an obligation of the Federal Reserve. Oh, wait. <laughs> hold on. Um, you guys must really see what's going on here because this is exactly what they said. Pay attention. Such notes shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve procuring the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury and shall be receivable at par, equal value, in all parts of the United States for the same purposes as national bank notes. What were national bank notes? Legal tender. And shall be redeemable in lawful money in the United States upon presentation to the United States Treasury or the Bank of Issue. Now it becomes tender of payment. That's how you prove that you tender payment. Okay? All right, look, hey, we're going to cut this. We didn't want to go this long, but we needed to explain this to people because you simply weren't getting it. And so I just want to say something real quick. I received a call this morning because we are doing 1099 C's for people, and it was from one of those law enforcement agencies calling to tell the company that blah, 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 they got hung up on. Yeah, give you permission to call us. Hey, gotta go.